Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv. So ivdi. International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash INV, and we'll get you the information that you need. Through those, and Michelle Pang had a question. Is there any tip on distinguishing ankylosis and resorption? And there's a lot of intertwined radiographic changes with those two, and I think the best example of that, and I'll use this example in multiple situations throughout this morning, and I, I think I used it a couple times last time from that tooth resorption discussion we had last month, <coughs> or last week, and uh, this is the image. So if you look at this, it's got, got good answers to, to your question, and then I've got another um, image that I'll show you following that that'll kind of go through that and show you exactly what we're what we're dealing with there so from the standpoint of ankylosis versus resorption if you look at that tooth that is present there uh, the the third premolar or the first one the first tooth on the left the right root or the distal root is undergoing replacement resorption so the bones coming in and replacing the tooth root there is no real tooth structure there like there is on the tooth to the right where you see a nice superimposition of the tooth dentin and cementum over the bone so you've got a nice distinct tooth root there. You've got a, a fairly distinct tooth root to the left of that resorbing root on the mesial root on that third premolar <coughs> and you can see the periodontal ligament space there. So there's no real ankylosis there. That's just replacement resorption. Uh, and you obliterate that periodontal ligament space with that replacement resorption. And it can confuse people, uh, which is, is fine, regarding ankylosis versus resorption. So let's take a look at this. This is a great example. So there has been resorption on that first molar on the distal root where you see that lucency under what's left of a root remnant at the marginal bone and then you've got the crown with the pointed cusp there on the distal side. So that's the end result of resorption and then we've got because of the resorption you have that that bone lucency instead of resorption because the tooth root has been completely resorbed and the perio has come in and started to destroy the bone. So that's a little bit, bit of a different scenario. But you look at that mesial root on that first molar, and you start to lose uh, a little bit of the distinction of that nice periodontal ligament space that we had in that tooth to the right there, that fourth premolar, which would be more normal uh, without any ankylosis starting. So that's, that's normal or maybe it's a little bit wider than what we normally see in cats, but that's certainly normal. And then that's less than normal on that mesial root on that molar. And then if you look at the next two teeth, the fourth premolar and the third premolar, to the left of that, <clears throat> there is distinct root structure on that fourth premolar and on the distal root on that third premolar, there may be some resorption starting, 
But the main thing with those two teeth in the mesial root on that third premolar looks like it's starting to resorb, but the ankylosis is definitely present there, and that being consistent with that nice distinct tooth root without the ghosting. Now that's kind of starting to happen there as we get on that mesial fourth, as, as I mentioned, and maybe on the apical part of the distal third and certainly on the mesial third. <clears throat> but you can see that there is no periodontal ligament space. So extraction of that tooth, that fourth premolar, number one is not indicated because it's not resorbing. There's not any distinct evidence that it's resorbing. We would follow both that third and fourth premolar radiographically and would not make any judgments on that at this point. Unless on that third premolar there might be some crown involvement. But those could go on and stay at that same level and not cause any problems going forward. <laughs> but the main takeaway is that, because, uh, well there's two, two main takeaways. One is because you've got resorption on that first molar and periodontal bone loss secondary to the bacteria getting into that defect from that tooth resorption and affecting the bone, and you've got some resorption starting on that mesial root, or I'm sorry, you've got some ankylosis starting, you've got a decrease in periodontal ligament space, and that's going to be a tough extraction. And it was. I had to take quite a bit of bone there. We show this with our level two wet lab pre-materials uh, before you actually come to the live wet lab. This is part of that course that we recorded live. But um, if you look at the, the amount of bone on that radiograph, which I don't have in here, uh, you'll see we took a lot of bone. But the tooth next to it and the third premolar, uh, we want to monitor those, but there is no indication to extract either one of those at this point. Uh, definitely not the fourth premolar. And when I say extract, um, if we did anything, uh, if we had a better view and more uh, information on that mesial root and decided to extract it, it would be a very difficult extraction of that distal root. So we would choose to wait on that. We wouldn't get, jump right in and do anything, Radi re radiograph that in maybe 12 to 18 months, depending on how many teeth were involved with this cat. And I, I show that, and we were talking about certainly tooth resorption in dogs, but that, uh, that's, that's applicable to dogs as well as cats. So that's a real good example with that radiograph. So I like to go back to that quite frequently. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash inv.